All right, Math 98, we're going to look at Section 7.3. Uh, we're going to do some factoring, some different types of factoring. We're going to look at greatest common factor, and we're going to look at factor by grouping. So two different ways to do some, some factoring. And we'll start with just thinking about number. If I just think about the numbers 54 and 36, and what I'm looking for is the greatest common factor, the biggest thing that goes into both of them. And, you know, you can just kind of like look at it and try. I'm going to talk about a real method to think about it as well. But if I just look at these both, like in my mind, they're both divisible by nine, right? So like this is nine times six. This is nine times four. So nine is definitely a common factor. But is it the greatest common factor? Um, and I don't think it is because six and four are both even, which makes me think like six is two times three and four is two times two. So nine times two is 18. This is 18 times three. This is 18, 18 times eight. So I think that 18 is probably the greatest common factor. So I had to work a little bit for it. So with number, one of the things you can do is start to break it into pieces. And you can, your book might encourage you to like take this down to prime numbers, but what you can do is go like, what do I know they have in common? I know these both have a nine in common. So I'm going to take that out of both. And what's left here is a 6. What's left here is a 4. And I'm going to do that again with what's left here. Uh, these both have a 2 in them. So this is 2 times 2. This is 2 times 3. Those are, uh, those are like relatively prime. There's no number other than 1 that goes into both of those. So now what I can do is I can grab what's left. The 9 times 2 is an 18. 9 times 2 is an 18. There's my common factor right there, that 18. Um, so, you know, you could do it again with like the numbers 18 and 40, say. Let's see. Uh, 2 goes into both of those. 2 times 9, 2 times 10. Oh, sorry, 2 times 20. Sorry. 2 times 20. Um, that might be it. 9 and 20. This is 3 times 3. This is 4 times 5. I'm not going to get anything common out of those. So it looks like 2 is my greatest common factor for 18 and 40. Way to think about this uh, that I'm going to extend out to. If I had 18 times 40, I could write that as 2 uh, times 9 plus 20. That would give me the same answer. So that's what I'm going to do, but with variable here in a moment. So let's think about 27x cubed and 18x to the fourth. So if I think about just the numbers, 27 and 18, uh, 3 goes into both of those. I see that 9 book goes into both of those as well. So this is 9 times 3. This is 9 times 2. So the 3 and the 2 are relatively prime. And if I look at x cubed and x to the fourth, well, x cubed has an x cubed in it times 1, and x to the fourth also has an x cubed in it. But notice that leaves me an x. So this 9x cubed... That's my greatest common uh, factor of both of these. Like this one is 9x cubed times 3, because what's left is 3 times 1. And this one is 9x cubed times 2x, right? And the 3 and the 2x don't have anything in common. 9x cubed is my greatest common factor. So thinking about that, thinking about this, um, I'm going to make a connection here, or try to. I know that 3 times x plus 5 is the same as, if I distribute that into there, 3x plus 15, right? And so what I just did here was multiplying. So that direction, left to right, that's multiplication. Now, if I undid that, and I thought, what do these have in common? They have a 3 in common, and I could take that 3 out. That's factoring. So factoring is undoing multiplication. So let's think about uh, something like 4x plus 20. If I want to factor this, the first thing I'm going to look for is, is there anything in common? What's the greatest common factor between 4x and 20? And I see it's 4. Like a 4 goes into both of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a 4 out. If I take a 4 out of 4x, I'm left with an x. If I take a 4 out of 20, I'm left with a 5. This is factored completely. Now notice I found the greatest, right? The biggest common factor. It is true that I could do this. I could take a two out, 
whoops, <laughs> and get that. But that's not completely factored. There's more I can take out of there. I'm undoing as much of the multiplication as I can. When I'm... So let's do it with these three then. So 18u minus 36. Um, 18 and 36, they both have a 3. I think they both have a 9 in them as well. And this is the only thing with the u. So I'm going to take a 9 out of there. And if I did, that leaves me with a 2u here, right? Take the 9 out. Take the 9 out of 36, that leaves me a 4. Oh my gosh, I could have gone further. The 2 and the 4, they both have an 18 in them. So if you come up with an answer and you're feeling pretty good, double check. Like I could take a 2 out of both of those as well. Notice I have out here 9 times 2, u minus 2, 9 times 2 is 18. Now it's factored completely. So... If you don't see it right away, you can take it out in pieces, but remember these are gonna get multiplied together. 4y squared, 24y and 28. They don't all have a y, so I can't take a y out. These are all divisible by four. So if I take a four out, that leaves me a y squared here. That leaves me a six y here, six times four is 24. And that leaves me a seven here. Yeah, seven times four. You can always recheck, right? Distribute that back in, and you should get the thing it came from. That's factored. Now let's take a look at this one. Well, they all have, sorry, that should have had a squared in it, sorry. Uh, they all have an x, so I know I can take an x out. They also, 9, 15, 21, those are all divisible by 3. So I take a 3 out. So 3x, if I divide a 3x out of this, I'm left with 3x squared. If I divide a 3x out of this, I'm left with minus 5x. And if I take a 3x out of that, the x is gone, giving, leaving me a 7. So now I'm going to look at another technique for factoring. And it's called factoring by, by grouping. So um, when I factor by grouping, this is not like factoring something out. If I look at four terms, and this actually is a, a, a technique to think about considering using when we have four terms. And with these four terms, um, there's nothing I can that they all have in common. Like these have an X in common, these all don't have. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm literally going to group it. I'm going to group it by the second two terms and as well as by the first two terms. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a greatest common factor to each of those. Now this doesn't always work, but uh, these problems will be set up so they do work. So it must have XY plus 3X. These both have an X in them. So just on these first terms, I'm going to factor out just the x, because I'm, I'm going to factor out as much as I can, which is the x. And then with these second terms, uh, I have got, I'm going to cheat. That should have just been a 2y. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to just take out a 2. Okay, so that, that looks good. Here's what I want you to notice, and this is, I think this is kind of subtle. Um, both of these have a y plus 3 in them now. And they're separated by that, by that plus sign. So in other words, what I did was I did some, some factoring, and I ended up with x times y plus 3 plus 2 times y plus 3. So now what I can do is I can factor that y plus 3 out of both of those. Right? Just like if it was an a, if I had x times a plus 2 times a, you're like, oh, I'd take out the a. Well, it's x times y plus 3 plus 2 times y plus 3. Ah, take out the y plus 3. So you've got y plus 3 times x plus 2. Just like this would be a times x plus 2. Instead of just an a, it's, an a, a, y, it's a y plus 3. This is factored by grouping. Let's do that a couple more times and uh, feel a little more comfortable. Factored by grouping. I've got four terms. This is a really good candidate for cat factoring by grouping. X squared plus 3x, these have both got an x in them. So take out an x, gives me an x plus 3. Negative 2x minus 6. I could take a negative 2 out of both of these. So if I take out a negative 2, take out a negative 2, I'm left with x, right, divide by negative 2. Divide this by negative 2, and it's a positive 3. And now notice I've got x plus this thing, minus 2, uh, plus that same thing. Right, that x plus 3, since those are the same, 
And this is the only reason why this works is because these ended up being the same. I can factor that out now. So I, now I take out that x plus 3. And what I'm left with is x minus 2. Again, if this said x times a minus 2 times a, you'd go like, oh, take the a out. A, the a is my x plus 3, times x minus 2. Let's do it one more time. Group these first two, they've got a y. Four terms, so that's a good candidate for it, y plus 4. Negative 7y minus 28. Let's take out a negative 7. y plus 4 again. Take out that y. And that is factored by grouping. So two techniques that we just talked about, one of them being factored by grouping, the other one being uh, the greatest. Give those uh, questions, the exercises a try. Send me any questions you have, message me, or throw them into the forums.